Hello, everyone. Please welcome Candace Dyer on COCW's Canna Corner live on Coffee Party USA Radio. Hey, everyone. What's up? My name is Candace Dyer, and I'm with COCW's Canna Corner. We are brought to you live by Cannabis Open Carry Walks, Coffee Party USA Radio. I take liberty with my coffee and the Human Solution International. Um, we do this every Monday at eight o'clock on the Cannabis Open Carry Walks page. Um, also from several other pages as well as the Human Solution International and just a lot of other pages that Bobby rocks and gets us on. And also um, Coffee Party Radio USA, of course, um, iTunes, I believe is what that is. And hell yeah. So, hey, Farrah, what's up, love? Um, we're going to go ahead and get the show going. Um, today, we are going to be speaking with Sean McAllister. I'm not sure if he's available right now, but uh, he will be on shortly. I'm going to go ahead and talk about a few things um, that we have coming up first. Um, we have a few walks coming up. Um, there's gonna be one, um, I don't have all the details on it yet, but it's gonna be at Lake Travis Smoke Shop in Austin, Texas. Um, I believe they're wanting to do a sign making party before, but I'm waiting on the times for that. So, but that'll be February 1st. That will be our two year celebration walk. We're also having one in Burleson area. So if you're not close to the Austin area, um, maybe you're closer to the Burleson one. Uh, we will be at Burleson Police Department with 420 Den, um, and we will be rocking it out there again. Uh, we are having so much uh, fun at these walks, y'all. I hope that you get a chance to come out and check us out, see what we're up to. Um, it just so much energy when you get out there on the streets, and it's awesome that you get to hear the feedback and see how many people are actually for this because you feel like you're the only one, but you're not. There's just a lot of people that aren't really speaking up. And once you get out there on the streets and start holding those signs saying haunt for cannabis and see how many people are actually for it, um, it kind of gets your excitement up and going and gets you ready to fight hard. You know what I mean? Fight harder um, for the cause because that's what we do. We want to educate the public on uh, cannabis, its benefits, and show people that it's not some scary thing that you've been taught your whole life. Um, also, we will be going Wednesday. Let me make sure I got the stuff for that. Sorry, y'all, I got a lot of notes here. Wednesday to Waco, Texas for the Texas Hemp Program. There's a public hearing, and I believe it starts at 9 um, it may start a little earlier, but I'm pretty sure it starts at nine. Um, and we will be going out there where a few of us are going to ride in a car and go speak our mind at this public hearing. I believe it, um, it's for hemp, of course, and for the, I believe it's the grow stuff in Texas, and I'm pretty sure. Uh, so we're going to go speak our minds on that. Um, also, right now, y'all, we are offering, we are fixing up order new flyers. Um, these are our flyers. They get passed out all over Texas. And if you notice right here, we have the sponsors at the bottom. Um, we are offering for you to put your logo and your website on there for $50. Um, that's a good deal. 10,000 flyers, your logo will be spread all over Texas. And it also helps us to be able to get more flyers. So you're helping two people, you and us. Um, find out what else um oh next week um we haven't got the information up yet because we were just told about this but raising canes in uh in arlington they will be out there again kicking ass uh dan and janet um they will be um out there i believe from two that's what time they normally start it may be a little later but check out the event page because we'll have all that up here shortly um and let y'all know also, I know we got more coming up. Okay, yeah, of course, we're fixing to talk about um, the uh, psychedelic conference that's coming up. But that will be when we get Sean on. Hopefully, we'll have him on soon. 
And then also y'all, we've got the hemp convention that we will be going to. Um, this is January 28th through the 30th in Dallas, Texas. Uh, they will be at the K. Bailey Hutchinson Convention Center um, in Dallas. So y'all, this is supposed to be a great event. They're gonna have a bunch of vendors. I believe they said there's over 200 or 150 to 200 speakers and vendors and um, they're expecting uh, about 10,000 people to be there. So if you are in the Dallas area, y'all go check the Texas Hemp Convention out. You know, one of the things that's going on, Candace, too, is a uh, court support and letter writing campaign for Danny Trevino in Michigan. I know that uh, it's one of the many things that uh, the Human Solution International is involved with, as you know. So right. we can, you can uh, update everybody on how that's going. He gets uh, sentenced on the 28th. And, Do you want to go ahead um, and tell everybody about that while you're on? Well, sure. So, so what we're doing is we're writing letters uh, in support of Danny Trevino. He's uh, a licensed medical marijuana dispensary owner, licensed in the state of Michigan. It was the very first one. He's also the only one being prosecuted, and there's no allegations other than he was operating a legal medical marijuana dispensary, and the federal government prosecuted him. Wow. So there's a couple of issues there, selective prosecution being one, and of course, he's following state law. He's not accused of doing anything like black market or out the back door or anything like that. So we've asked people to write letters in support of the judge to show leniency in the case. Uh, and, and those letters, uh, that information can be found on the walkforchange.us website, walk the number four change.us website. Uh, there shows support for Danny Trevino. You'll see the, the link right there and then the address for the attorney, et cetera, is available for those who would, would like to participate. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. Heck yeah. Yeah. So all my letter writers out there, uh, this is a perfect way for you to get involved. Um, I know there's a lot of y'all that can't get out on the streets and can't walk, um, but you, you, you love to write letters and stuff. So this is a great way for you to help and get involved. You know, another thing, too, that's going on that we just started working on is there is a sheriff's election in Texas. This is Texas now, so everybody pay close attention. All you COCW marvelous people out there and other Texans that are trying to end prohibition. So in Russ County, Texas, Henderson, I think in Henderson, I want to say. Anyway, right. Russ County, R-U-S-K, there is a sheriff that's running for office whose daughter and son, who happens to be a friend of all, mine, personal friends of mine, and, and also um, cannabis warriors, and also psilocybin warriors. You're going to meet Tyler, as a matter of fact, at the conference. He told me, I spoke with him Sunday, by the way. Oh, heck yeah. You're, you're going to interview him. Everybody said so you'll, you'll, you'll be able to interview him on camera and meet him, Tyler Proc. Anyway, so Samantha Proc's father is, is this sheriff. And they are essentially cannabis refugees. They moved to, they moved to Colorado some years ago, I actually interviewed them at length in 2017 in Colorado about their story. And, you know, they're cannabis uh, refugees. Uh, they use cannabis medicinally. Samantha has healed immensely. Um, and so the opponents to the sheriff are using Samantha's use of cannabis to make the world think that he's the, the, an evil sheriff. Now, this is, he's already done two terms. Right, right. And, and he this, has been. This wedding happened like a long time ago, right? They're right. dating around for stuff. Exactly. And, and so, so he's done two terms. And during this process, he's been educated by watching his daughter, he's a father, watching his daughter heal in Colorado, operating legally. And they're using this fact against him to attack him to get him out of office. So they posted pictures about. Uh, her smoking cannabis at her wedding. And, and then they also attacked his wife who went through a serious op opioid addiction process who now no longer has it. Has nothing to do with the cannabis, but this is the things that they did. So when this happened, of course, you know, it just pissed me off to my friends, first of all. But it was an opportunity for all of us anti-prohibitionists to make a stand in an election in Texas and right. show the world 
how important it is to end prohibition. So always glad to have the COCW crew involved and stuff like that. And other organizations in Texas are, are, are going to mobilize. Actually, um, you know, you're going to be leading that, you know, me as a, here's Candace, go get them, you know, and, and uh, Samantha and Tyler are going to be available on your show in February. Yeah. And like I said, you're meeting Tyler at the conference, which I didn't even know until, uh, you know, they grow, they grow psil psilocybin in, in Denver where they helped, they were part of the movement to decriminalize. Right. So these are, they, you know, and, and, and they work in the industry and, and they're just marvelous, marvelous couple. And, and they're from Texas. I'm very and, excited to meet them for sure. I can't wait. And yeah, that's bullshit that they're doing that to them. Yeah, it, it, uh, like it, like I said, it was a legal. It's a legal place. They went to a legal place, and and the sheriff has been been around for a while. And to use this is just bullshit. Yeah, in thir thirty years, uh, I, I would learn when I when I talk to them Sunday to get some background on uh, so we can get involved. The walk can get involved in COCW and and Human Solution International and. The Texas Cannabis Collective and Veterans for Natural Rights. Here we go. We're going to get them. So, so when I was talking to them, he's 30 years in law enforcement, and as I said, this is he's running for his third term. He would be the first one to have a third term in that county ever if he got it. But I mean, he he the crime has gone down. Now, obviously, we could say, well, you know, he's a sheriff. He's probably arresting cannabis people, which is, you know, I'm not going to say he isn't. But the right. fact that he's been educated now and right. watched his daughter heal changes everything. It yeah. changes the game, changes the game. He knows now that the people, you know, that, and he also knows that the, the plan is not, you know, he's learned by, by his daughter, which they had to leave Texas in right. order to do this. You know, they had, they didn't, they had to leave their families. They had to do all that to go to Colorado and do that. And, and, and they're doing so, you know, she's doing fantastic. And, and you know, they're, they're living great lives. And of course, they're helping other people. So we need to reciprocate for them, you know, and, and uh, we need to make a stand. And we get to be involved in, in coffee parties going to be involved. Egberto, Egberto Willis is going to be involved uh, with Politics Done Right, who was also on the board, you know, uh, of um, the Coffee Party USA and has a show out of Houston five days a week. And so we're going to have. We're gonna have some fun with this one. We're gonna, and and the the prime it's a so and it's the primary, right? And the primaries are in March, and and you know, you know so it's a very it's a very uh, and and we all know I hate parties. I know you hate parties, except unless it's a good party. We don't yeah, like, we don't like that. parties. So, but it's a Republican party issue. So he's a Republican, and and he's being attacked by his own party in the primary on this way. It's 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 just amazing. I'm like okay, so we're gonna get him. Right. We're gonna get him. We're gonna get him. Yeah, yeah. definitely yeah we need we need to get them back in there and and show them some support um for sure i will be definitely be keeping an eye on that and let all of y'all know what's going on as soon as i know more about it yeah we can have Thank a rust you. county cocw created right yes we could. anybody Absolutely. in rust want to step up and help we would love to have y'all Definitely. I hear that this I hear that it's close to I haven't looked at the map, but they were telling me it's close to Shreveport, Louisiana, too. So we get a Shreveport COCW. You know, Louisiana is only the most incarcerated state in the country. Right. You know? Right. So we we need to, yeah. It's, it's For we're, sure. ready. we're gonna get I'm it. I'm gonna try to send a message real quick uh, to right. Sean because I'm wondering, he told me he had the link in his calendar, but mm -hmm. I want to make sure and send him a reminder real quick. Say, hey, Sean, what are you doing, man? Are you, are, are, are you, uh, are you sampling your, your uh, <laughs> you know, are you creating yourself, are you creating some content for your conference? We support that, but come on and talk about it, right? Yeah, right. Sean's a busy guy, I know. Uh, Taryn yeah, is letting yeah. me know that I will have to call in to talk to her because she's on her way home from work. Um, so if we don't got Sean on now, oh, he just saw it, so he might be coming on. Marvelous. Okay. Cool, cool. So we'll just wait. And then after him, we're going to have Tara on. Taryn, she is a patient. Um, she's also a COCW organizer with Collin County, um, and she's a patient with psychedelics. As y'all know, I'm not uh, too familiar about the psychedelic uh, medication process yet. I plan on getting all up to date at this convention. Um, 
The convention is called Consciousness and Psychedelic Conference. So there's supposed to be all kinds of education going on, on in this conference and you know, it's important. It's an important subject too, particularly for the, from the educational side for the cannabis industry, because it is, it is a tentacle to it. It, it is essentially um, another way to be healthy. Uh, you know, there's, there's um, MDMA, which is the purest form of what the drug is called ecstasy. And there actually are um, trials going on that are approved by Congress and the FDA, for example, an MDMA. Um, a colleague and friend of mine, Emmanuel Fisiferius, is behind all of that. They did a documentary called MDMA, the movie. And so it's a very important subject. And, and of course, Sean is available to talk about it. Awesome. Hell yeah. Let's get Sean on here. Well, not really. What's up, Sean? How are you doing? Hello, what's up? So good to see you. <laughs> good to be seen. Sorry, I'm a little late. I was having some trouble with the Zoom link on my phone, so I'm on my. Oh, you're good. I figured I might need to send it to you again, really quick, just in case maybe something was going on. Oh, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. So I, I'm I'm gonna go to this conference. I'm very excited about it. The consciousness. You are the organizer of consciousness, consciousness and psychedelics. <laughs> Tongue twister. Um, and I wanted to get you on to talk a little bit about that. Sure. Yeah, we're uh, we're hosting the Consciousness and Psychedelics Conference. It's a first of its kind psychedelics educational event in Arlington, Texas, on January 25th at the Bob Duncan Center, which is a community uh, city owned uh, facility, which is pretty exciting that they even wanted us to participate. Right. In, right. Uh, in their facility, so uh, it's it's pretty cool. We're having a full day of educational presentations. Uh, we've got a gentleman who's talking about psychedelic cactus and how you can uh, cultivate your own psychedelic cactus and in, including uh, how to do what's called grafting. So you can graft one cactus to another so it can get stronger and grow faster right. uh, and become more potent. So we have a, a bunch of different talks where people are talking about the various therapeutic ways Texans are currently using psychedelics. We're not talking about the law at this event, uh, it's not really relevant to what we're talking about, you know, psychedelic. Right. We know that laws probably aren't changing anytime soon. So what are Texans doing in the meantime? That's a lot of what we'll be discussing. Right, right. Definitely going to be a good time. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be at what time do you want to get there? Yeah, so uh, the first presentation starts at 8 a.m. And the doors will open at 7.30 so people can come in and get like a coffee and a seat and check out some vendor booths. Uh, but we'll have presentations almost all day. There will be a lunch break in there, but we'll have presentations and a, a documentary screening throughout the day. And uh, there'll be a, a multiple vendor rooms where I think there's gonna be like 20 plus vendors where people can go and check out a bunch of different stuff that our exhibitors are bringing. And then we'll have a few different giveaways and stuff uh, that people can participate in at low or no cost. Uh, and then one of the most cool things about it is this DMT audio visual experience that is being created by a gentleman called Andy Melder. Oh, and have, 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 uh, are you, do you do psychedelics, Candice? I have, I have tried it once, small, small dose. And so I really haven't um, given it uh, a fair run, run, I guess, uh, of trying. I have done the harder, which is acid. I mean, I've done that a couple times, but I've never tried shrooms. So no. <laughs> uh, well, so uh, recently I have tried several different psychedelics that are new to me and uh, they have been extremely enlightening for me personally uh, as a human who is flawed and trying to learn and get better every day. Right. Uh, and they've especially been useful to me in my relationship with my partner, Jessica, uh, where, you know, we've been together for about three years, very intense love that love uh, sometimes that. is uh, kind of difficult, you know, you know to you know, even be in the same room together. And so psychedelics have really helped us create our <laughs> own couples therapy program that, yeah. uh, you know, we can do on our own time that you know, we're not competing to be right in front of some therapist that we don't right. uh, really even know. And it's been extremely helpful for us and, and you know, helped us grow individually and as 
a couple. And so, you know, for a lot of people who are suffering in a relationship that they don't really understand each other, we have found that, you know, psychedelics are a really effective use, a uh, couples therapy tool. And so we're going to be talking about how these substances, many of which are brand new to us, have, right. you know, genuinely changed our lives. And, uh, you know, I, I think that all, many Texans could stand to benefit from experimenting with, with these substances as long as they're doing so from a, a researched perspective. And what we want to do is create an event where somebody can come and say, okay, what is DMT? How do I smoke it? What do I expect right. uh, whenever I consume it? And, you know, what should I be afraid of? And, you know, all of these things that it's kind of hard to get a straight answer on the internet sometimes. Right. And so uh, the Consciousness and Psychedelics Conference intends to create a safe place for Texans to talk about psychedelics and we're gonna do it. Now that is awesome. I'm very excited about this. It's gonna be a good time, y'all. Uh, Bob Duncan Center in Arlington, Texas. Um, can we talk about, I guess, some of the uh, vendors that are gonna be out there, give them a shout out? Sure, yeah, let me pull up the list so I can look at them really quick. But uh, we've got, I'm, I'm only gonna name a couple of them, okay. uh, but, I, I, some of the ones that I definitely want to shout out, number one is CBD Dulce, cbddulce.com. They were our very first vendor. Uh, Ron and his team, they've been supporting what we've been doing with Normal for years now, and just they're awesome people, and they've got really excellent products. So uh, you're going to definitely see them in a very prominent position in our yeah, vendor yeah. hall. And then we've got a, a brand new vendor to me called Essentials from Aaron, and this is a young woman who is selling jewelry uh, with her mother and started a business, even though I think she's in high school right oh, now. Oh, wow. Uh, and, you know, she had, they bought a double si a double size booth because they believe that their audience is the people that are coming to this event. Yeah, and then yeah. I, I can't ever talk about vendors without talking about one of my favorites, which is Hempy's Emporium in Arlington. They, uh, they've got a vendor booth. They are one of the best smoke shops in the state of Texas, if not the best. Uh, and they're in Arlington, and they are going to have a bunch of really cool stuff out there for people who are interested in psychedelic uh, medicines and healing. Uh, and then the last one I would shout out is Midnight Mushroom Co. Uh, this is a small, independently owned company here in Texas, and uh, they grow gourmet mushrooms like you would see on the Discovery Channel. Oh, and wow. they sell them to all these restaurants around town and, and they teach people how to grow these very exotic looking mushrooms, which are, you know, a hair away from being the psychedelic mushrooms. So if you understand right. how these grow, you can understand how those grow. So it would be uh, like so, hemp compared, I mean, hemp would be, it'd be kind of compared like that. Like we got hemp that doesn't have the THC. So it'd be kind of like that, you mean? Similarly, yeah, uh, you know, the, the mushrooms we get on our pizza aren't psychedelic, but you right. could put psychedelic mushrooms on your pizza, right? right. And so, you know, the, like you said, they're, they're so close to the same thing. And so Midnight Mushroom Co., uh, Michael Shotty, he's going to be there presenting on how to cultivate these mushrooms, both psychedelic and gourmet. Uh, and, you know, he's going to, uh, I think, give us a little kit that is going to be like a, a prize where people can start their own gourmet mushroom grow with what he's going to give us. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so really cool stuff like that is going to happen. And, uh, you know, I just think it's going to be unique. Uh, most of the events like this really focus a lot on policy, which I think is pretty dry and dull and boring for the most part, especially since that ship almost never turns. Right. Uh, and yet culture, uh, the therapeutic uh, uses of these substances, these are things that are always developing and always changing. And so there's a lot to talk about there. And so we're going to spend an entire day just trying to talk about it as much as we can and try to grow this psychedelic movement in Texas that is already here, that right. is totally underground and just existing and try to bring it out into the light so we can kind of get to know each other a little bit and trade secrets and uh, hopefully do something even bigger the next time we want to do something like this. That's badass. I'm so excited. I'm ready. I'm ready for this. This is going to be a good time. Um, so if any of y'all out there would like to get involved or come to this conference, uh, y'all check out um, where, where, where would they look on Facebook for it? So you can either look on Facebook and I know it's a mouthful. You can type in consciousness and psychedelics conference. Uh, it, actually, if you just type in psychedelics conference, it'll probably come up. And then the tickets are for sale on Eventbrite. And so if you type in psychedelics conference on Eventbrite, boom, we should be the first thing that comes up there. And awesome. for your listeners who are here and paying attention, I will drop a 50% discount code 
on the ticket. The tickets are 50 bucks, but if you use this discount code I'm about to tell you, it's 50% off. And that code is FRIENDSHIP, F-R-I-E-N-D-S-H-I-P. So oh, you yeah. just put that code in at the checkout and you'll get 50% off. Cool deal. Well, thank you very much, Sean. I know um, this isn't the only thing that you were into. I'd like to introduce our audience to you and what you are a big part of the cannabis movement. Uh, I see you at a lot of the events. And so I know y'all got a lot going on. I know you're with Normal. Do you want to tell us a little bit about any of the stuff coming up with them or what you do or any of that? Sure. Uh, briefly, I've been involved with the Dallas-Fort Worth chapter of the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws since 2011. I'm the executive director, which basically means my job is to try to wrangle stoned cats into doing something meaningful. <laughs> Mixed results with that. Uh, we, we do big, as far as I know, we host the biggest, single biggest cannabis event in the state of Texas every year, which is the uh, DFW Marijuana March. Yes. This is anywhere between, you know, one to as many as, you know, 4,000 people one year that openly marching in the streets, consuming cannabis, all while being escorted by Fort Worth, uh, Fort Worth's finest officers on bicycles and not getting arrested for it. Uh, and so we host this uh, cannabis march every year, first, uh, second weekend of May. And the idea is kind of like the conference. We're trying to bring the community out of their backyards and off their couches where they're safe and out into the light of liberty where it's kind of scary, but also kind of thrilling. Right. And, uh, the only and best way to meet people that are interested in the type of stuff that you're interested in. Uh, and so at Normal, we try to right. educate Texans about how the laws change regarding marijuana, what they can do to change the laws, uh, you know, what they can do to avoid getting busted with cannabis in the state of Texas. Right. Most of the communications we get are people asking me for a lawyer. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, uh, we're just here to try to not only change the laws, but also try to change people's mind about what a pot smoker looks like. You know, right, for me, right. I'm an articulate person. I'm a business professional. Uh, don't let the ponytail fool you. Uh, you know, I, but to me, the, the uh, Texas marijuana uh, personality was always some stoner. And right. you know, whether that be Matthew McConaughey, whom I love, and I think he's awesome and funny, but you know, that's not me. And so with normal, I realized that I could kind of use my voice to help Texans find their own voice on cannabis. So they could be out there, you know, after they hear me talk about something, they go out there and they're going to talk about it in their own way. And so right. that, that's been the main goal for me is to try to inspire people to use their own voice because, you know, I was shy. I never did public speaking before. Uh, and now me that's too. what I do. <laughs> and you know, it still kind of freaks the shit out of me, but I still do it because I know it's the right thing to do. Right, right. Yeah, I can totally relate to that. Kind of just got thrown into all this stuff. And uh, But we've been to the, mar the normal marijuana march now for the, our, our second year was last year. So we will definitely be going this year. Um, I'm looking forward to it. We've been telling everybody about it. Uh, and I, man, I just thank you and Jess so much for all y'all do. I am looking forward to spending the day with y'all at this convention. And it's going to be my first time being able to uh, cover an event. So y'all bear with me. We're going as press this year. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have so much fun. I know y'all are great people. Y'all are like friends and family. So <laughs> well, thank you. You know, we're a community. We, you, and if we don't stick together, they're going to get us one at a time. And that is right. Exactly. Right. So Definitely. And we're glad that you, you, uh, with your show, y'all want to cover this, you know, this is the, we're charging for tickets, but you know, if somebody comes to me and says, look, I want to come, I think my grandma can learn something, but I can't afford the ticket price. Message me and we'll work something out. You know, we'll figure something out because I want to make money for my investors, but really what I want is to have a great event. And so if right, you know, we right. can do both, then awesome. You know, it, if we can help somebody out, it, pr pr uh, possibly put some information in front of somebody uh, that could change their lives, then we should do it. And that's right. That's, cool. that's what we're trying to do. Heck yeah. Well, thank you very much, y'all. Friendship. Remember that password. Um, put that in to get some discounts on that ticket. And thank you so much for coming on, um, Sean. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks again for having me. I, I'm happy to come back anytime always anytime you got anything going on hit me up and tell me we'll bring you on and talk about it okay we'll do cool deal i'll see you All later right, bye. thank you bye.
Heck yeah, y'all. That was Sean McAllister. So I'm going to now call Taryn and try to get her on the phone. Bear with me for a second. I know she is on her way from work. So let's get her on here. She works at the VA. She is a nurse, y'all. Calling her now. Hello. Hey, love. Hang on just a second. You're good. I got a cue on my car. Okay. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I can hear you. Are you oh, ready? Okay. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Right, I want you to be safe. Don't work. don't get in a wreck. Yeah, I know, right? You're coming home from work. You want to? I want to. I introduced everybody and told told them that you work with the VA and you are a nurse. Um, I also let them know that you are a patient with psychedelics, and that we were just going to talk about that for a little bit. Um, uh, yeah. So. Uh... Hi, everybody. I'm taking a 21-day prayer fast thing with church, so I haven't been on Facebook. I miss you guys. I feel totally out of the loop. Oh, no, so, no. I you're good. Shout out first. Right. Um, yeah, so... No, I'm glad you're I, do doing that. It's a good thing. Community and um, taking some time off to speak with God and get to know God a little bit more. And... Yeah, well, that's what I feel like 2020 is all about, and that's why I'm about this um, psychedelic conference because I just feel like 2020 is going to be like a spiritual movement. Um, I think we're going to see really big things in 2020, and um, I'm I'm really excited about this the psychedelic conference. It is an underground world. It I felt totally alone for a long time. I mean, I didn't even talk to you guys about it. Right. Uh, because I did, I was still learning about it, and if anybody knows me, I investigate everything until I pick, I can pick it apart piece by piece. Right. Um. Right. Once I get on something, and let me tell you, I don't, I don't uh, medicinally treat myself with all psychedelics. I'm strictly psilocybin, which is mushroom. Right. Um. Uh, and it has totally transformed my life. I mean, I don't even know how else to describe it. I it has totally transformed my life. I I feel I feel complete. Heck yeah. What 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 sort of stuff does it help with? Like uh what do you treat yourself so, for? So I for the longest time have since I was seven, I have been on some kind of benzo, psychotropic medication, you name it, I have been on it. Um, I believe I was on a thousand milligrams of Depakote at the age of 12. Um, so I've pretty much been on everything you can imagine due to, you know, multiple mental illness, you know, things like that. You from right. my childhood, whatever. Um, so I finally, after years of being misdiagnosed, I finally found a, a, an amazing physician here in McKinney that properly diagnosed me, and he diagnosed me uh, bipolar 2, which for those of you that are listening that do not know the difference between bipolar 1 and bipolar 2, um, they're very similar as far as the manic episodes and the depression. Right. Um, however, with bipolar 2, you do not have the law risking behavior. Like, I'm not, I don't see to excess. I don't shoplift. Right. I don't have those behaviors. Right, right. Um, how, however, my manic episodes are probably worse than the depression, if you want my honest opinion. And the thing about the psilocybin what it does with that is it it kind of makes everybody in my head happy 
Right. So if you can imagine you talking to me and asking me questions, my husband's talking to me and talk, asking me questions, my kids are wanting something, and all while I'm trying to listen to my mom, right. and I'm thinking about the patients that I messed up on or I missed something on that day or, you know, somebody that I have failed, it's a constant middle battle. And with the solo seven, I don't have that. Wow, that is awesome. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm glad I'm, that you found that. And I, I'm so interested in learning more about it at this conference. I know you're going to, right? Oh, yeah. I bought my ticket weeks ago. Heck, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I'm totally... Uh, it, I had the pleasure of meeting a gentleman named John. We worked together at the last gun show here in Allen. And together we worked... Uh, we volunteered for Bob Smiley. Shout out to CJ. You guys are awesome. Yeah, I love awesome, Bob. Um, anyway, so I got to talk to John a little bit, and he really kind of, he's the one that told me, hey, there's there's people out there like us. <laughs> and right. I didn't know that. Like I said, I didn't even talk to you guys about it. I, you know, I didn't talk to my husband about it for a long time, and I didn't talk to my mom about it for a long time. And my mom is actually the one that, saw some, um, something on Good Morning America about how they were using psychedelics to treat antidepressant or to treat depression and right. stuff like that. And she, she brought it up to me, I mean, after I had microdosing. So it was a relief to know that, you know, I do have a support system out there. And, you know, this isn't some hippy dippy, you know, this is real medicine. Right. Well, it only makes sense. I mean, when you, when I started diving into the cannabis as medicine world, um, I mean, we already knew it, but when I started reading and, and going into videos and looking stuff up for myself, it only makes sense that um, the mushrooms and psychedelics would have kind of a same effect. You could to make it where it's mushrooms. If y'all... If y'all don't realize, most of the stuff and medication that the pharmacy uses um, is these plants and things that they use to make their medicine. And so this, it, it only makes sense. And I'm so interested in learning from y'all, learning from you, um, maybe um, looking into it a little bit more for myself, for sure, because um, you're saying it helps with depression. I've never been diagnosed with bipolar, but I know what the manic shit is. So I know I have it because I stay up for like days at a time and my mind never stops. Um, but that also comes with PTSD and shit. So I, I just don't like labels. Um, <laughs> so I know I'm fucked up, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> well, but I mean, that's the, that's the beauty of our community is that, you know, we're all damaged. If we're to, if somebody was to say that they're not, I would probably laugh. Right. But we're all damaged right. some way. And so even for the ones that say, oh, well, you know, I don't support, you know, cannabis use or, you know, psychedelic use for recreational purposes, only medicinal purposes, show me somebody that's not going to benefit from that. Right. I mean, there's not one person alive that won't benefit. So everybody, the whole recreational thing, you know, that stigma, I feel, needs to be completely broken. Right. Well, it's all about choice. It's all about freedom. And we're supposed to be free. We should be able to medicate ourselves the way we so choose. Um, well, Candace, when I was medicating myself legally, when I was getting my Ativan, and when I was getting my Lexapro, and when I was getting my Trazodone, and when I was getting, you know, whatever drugs they were peddling down my throat, and I, keep in mind, I never did abuse them, I used them exactly like they were prescribed, right. I was pushing 300 pounds, I was so depressed that I drove my vehicle off the side of a road, Wow. <laughs> you know, when your kids, when your kids aren't enough to keep you alive, there's a serious problem, Yes. even whenever yes. you're seeking treatment the right way, Right. you know, and then right. now if you look at it, I've lost to date 122 pounds, I've run 10 plus miles, I'm, you know, a totally different person, 
I totally agree. Well, I love having you on the team and you've been doing an amazing job. And I just wanted to give you a huge shout out for that in Collin County. Um, I know that uh, you are doing um, something for the Walk for Change as well. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about that? I know you ain't got the dates yet, but do you want to talk about the race thing and everything or the marathon? Sorry, not race. So, well, um, I, I don't know so much about the marathon, but I was thinking about, you know, because I do love the VA so much. My husband's a veteran. I bleed red, white, and blue. Uh, so I thought about mapping out 13.1 miles, which will be my first half marathon ever that I've really been working for. Um, mapping out 13.1 miles from the VA in Bonham and running to Bonham and ending up there because they do have, they've got a drug program there. And, you know, I just, I love, love, love my people over there. And I miss my people very much. I don't see them as much as I want to. Right, right. Hell yeah. Well, I know we got a lot of runners probably watching right now. They would love to join you on this run. Um, Y'all stay tuned for the event. Um, we will have it up as soon as we, right now what it is is the Walk for Change is going all the way across America. We're trying to get um, all our organizers together so we can figure out um, a timetable plan to where they're going to be in coming through Texas. It, we know it's going to be at the beginning of, or at January 20th, um, 2020, and it's going to be ending in October, but we're still trying to get that timeline down. As soon as we figure that out, then of course we will give you all some more better dates. But um, I'm sure that, uh, how would they contact you if they want to join you on this run? Sorry. Sorry. You're good. Oh, okay, my app actually opened up and I didn't want to echo. Oh, shoot, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was talking. Um, but I, I was asking, how would they get a hold of you um, if they wanted to join you on this run from the VA? Oh, shoot, y'all can reach me through Messenger. I just I just took the Facebook app off of my phone for about a month and a half. Okay. And I haven't been able to get back to it. Yeah. Walk for change. I mean, it, there's a million different ways. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do it. So, any avenue. Heck yeah. Well, thank you, love, so much for coming on. I know you just got off work and everything. I um, did. I just pulled up. So I'm ready to go in. I so appreciate it. We're going to go ahead and let you go ahead and go in and see your kids and your hubby now. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I will see you on the 25th. Me and Jay will be there. Um, yes. Oh, I can't wait to see them. I haven't seen them in so long, yeah. it seems like. Oh, They're yeah. both going to get a huge oh, hug for me, so be ready. <laughs> Bye, Bye Taryn. You have a good day. Heck yeah, y'all. So that is Taryn Compton. She is a sweetheart. Um, if y'all are interested in getting involved with that marathon, just hit her up or hit Cannabis Open Carry Walks Up. If you are interested in getting involved with the Walk for Change, I know y'all have heard me talk about this for all uh, forever. I'm gonna go ahead and get the flyer out. The Walk for Change, y'all. Um, this right here is a wonderful way to get involved. Um, the mission uh, through unity in diverse communities, we will demonstrate the value of peaceful protesting to bring about change. The vision is the walk for change is an action in motion, providing the organized platform for those seeking a common sense solution to government cannabis prohibition. So um, y'all go um, check out the walk for change. Um, it's www.walk4change.us and look, check out that website. If you're wanting to volunteer and get involved right now, we are, it's gonna be starting June 20th, um, that's gonna be the launch. If you know anybody that is wanting to sponsor this launch party, this thing is gonna be huge. They are leaving from Southern California and it will end, um, this walk going all the way across Texas will end in Washington, DC. But at the same time, y'all, if you can't join them on the whole walk, because I know a lot of, 
I would have a hard time taking four months off to join, although I would love to, to join everybody to uh, walk the whole walk. We're also doing little walks all over. So like Taryn is doing her thing where she's gonna do a marathon run or a run from the VA. Um, I know Dan is planning on starting uh, at the top of Texas and coming down to Dallas. Um, I just figured that out today. Um, there will be more up about that. I know that we are having a walk here in Burleson. It's going from racetrack to the Burleson Police Department. It's clocked at about 11 miles. So um, if y'all are interested in starting one in your area, hit up, this hit up the page, the Walk for Change page, go to volunteer. We are looking for volunteers. We are looking for leaders to help us lead in this because um, this is going to take a whole lot of people. This is a uh, it's really a year long event because right now all the walks that we're having right now are like pre rallies to the walk. Like um, we are letting everybody know about this walk and to get involved with all the walks we're doing right now. So um, if you are wanting to get involved, you message the page, um, the walk for change and it'll have a place on there that says volunteers and you hit them up. We need everybody y'all. We are trying to join all. And this isn't just about cannabis prohibition. Yes, it's, it's the biggest amount of people that are getting involved are involved in the cannabis movement. But we are also walking for change. We are walking for justice. We are walking for um, um, clean water. We are walking for indigenous rights. We are walking because we don't want um, our water and lands being polluted by all these pipelines going through everybody's yard, backyards. and. There, there's got to be something that you want to change that you can join with us and walk for. I mean, this is, it's, it's, it's a wonderful movement and I'm so excited to be a part of it. We represent, I'm one of the many, many people representing the Walk for Change. So if y'all have any questions, you can hit me up. You can get on the website. To, we are looking for places to sleep. Of course, people are going to be coming through. They're going to be tired. They're gonna need a place to rest, to get up and walk the next morning. So if you've got a backyard, they can tent. It should be about 20, 25 people, maybe more um, coming through. Uh, if you can cook a meal and maybe you can feed them as they come through that spot. Um, we are looking for people who are willing to walk. We are looking for people who are willing to spread the word. We are looking for people who can donate, uh, maybe donate food to be cooked. Maybe donate uh, shoes or socks for the walkers. Um, there's so much that can be done. So if you're thinking, oh, wow, I can't, I can't walk that long, you know, there is something in this walk for you. We will find a place for you. Uh, so hell yeah, y'all. I guess um, that's all I got for today. Oh, wait, no, I don't. Um, I am wearing, I don't know if y'all can see, Doobie Trap goodie shirt. Y'all, it says fight for the cause. We have a few of these left um, at our walks. Uh, so if you want to get help, get involved. This is for Mona Woodchuck and Steven. They got busted for, uh, they do be trap goodies. Obviously they uh, make uh, cannabis edibles and they are so good. And so they got busted. And so they are fighting that case and all the money and proceeds from the shirts. These shirts are $10, go straight back to them. And yes, we will have them at our walks. Um, so if y'all want one, hit us up and we will get the money back to her. Um, also, don't forget $50 gets you on a flyer, um, your business or logo. These things, these bad boys get passed out all over Texas. We have people all over that um, get a hold of these flyers and pass them out on their walks. We take them to smoke shops. Um, we set them on the counters. So um, these go with a lot of people's hands. Also, uh, Mandy is a to be soon coming. She's making up one of these uh, trifold flyers and she's got an idea to make it interactive to where you can uh, do the, you know how these, you these little things right here, you can just take a thing on your phone and it'll take you directly to a website. I can't wait till y'all get to see her idea. She is a badass and I love it. I love the fact that people are gonna be able to take this thing home. They're gonna be able to open it up. They're gonna be able to 
use their phone and and interact with this flyer and this flyer will change so you don't have to throw this away you click you you're gonna look it up later and find the latest events happening and so it's gonna change man it is so badass i cannot believe she thought of it but yes so that will be coming soon a uh, big shout out to the human solution international um Cannabis Open Carry Walks, of course, Coffee Party Radio USA. I take liberty with my coffee. Y'all all all rock. Thank you for supporting uh, COCW and helping us to educate the public on the benefits of cannabis. Uh, I guess that is all I got for tonight, Uh, y'all. Have a great day. Peace.